John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judah and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River, and they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruits as evidence of your repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. By the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Convert. This is the word of the second Sunday of Advent. Convert. But convert to what and why? If the first Sunday of Advent invited us to prepare the house, a general mission of Advent, because the Savior, the Son of God, is coming. Part of that preparation was precisely invite you to it, confession, which implies conversion. However, this Savior has a characteristic. He has several, but I want to focus on one of them, humbleness. What stands out most about the cave of Bethlehem? St. Joseph, the Blessed Virgin, the baby in the cradle, what stands out most is the virtue of humility. So the conversion to welcome the humble par excellence has to be a conversion to humility. What does it mean to convert to humility? Humility has many facets. It is a virtue which has many nuances. I would like to focus on at least one of them. Humility understood as the acceptance of mystery. We are all inevitably want to understand as if that would be useful for something. But, well, we want to understand. What a misfortune happens to us, we ask and we ask ourselves. And we ask God, why did this happen to me? Maybe we should ask the question in another way. What did this happen to me? This is, what can I get out of it? What lesson can I draw from it? What fruit can I draw from this? But on the other hand, we do not usually ask ourselves these questions. We ask why this did happen to me. Man needs to understand. There in the cave of Bethlehem, there was not much to understand. On the contrary, in the cave of Bethlehem, everything seemed absurd from the human point of view. The same as later on Calvary, the same. Humility at the beginning, humility at the end. A child born in a cave of sheep, a God who dies, tortured by his enemies, humility. The Blessed Virgin, the humble one, was the one who accepted not to understand that this is why the incarnation could take place, the birth could take place. The company that the Virgin kept Jesus until the last moment of the cross. This is the virtue which I invite you to practice in the exercise of conversion. 
which is what the Gospel asks of us today, second Sunday of Advent. Humility, accept not to understand. I am not saying that we have to accept absurd things. I am not referring to that. I am referring to the fact that there are situations, generally problems, because the truth is that nobody asks themselves transcendental questions when they win the lottery. Nobody says, why did it happen to me? Why did this happen to you? We ask ourselves these questions when something goes wrong. When something goes wrong and always there are some things that go wrong and something that worries us. Let us make this act of conversion. Lord, I trust you. This is humility. Lord, I am your slave. I accept. You do not have to give explanations. If you want to give them to me, great, but I do not demand explanations. You allow for this to happen. Give me the strength to carry this cross, but I accept this because it comes from you. If we were capable of recognizing God's will, even in that blue that hits me in the face and hurts me, we would already be on the path of true conversion, on the path of imitation of Mary. As an illustrious Jesuit from the time of Pius XII, Father Lombardi said years ago, When the slap comes from my brother's hand, it is my brother's responsibility. It is my brother's will. However, when the slap reaches my face, it is God's will. Let us make this act of conversion on this second Sunday of Advent to welcome the humble and also welcome the one who comes with him, the mother and the son. Let us make this act of conversion. Lord, I trust in you. I do not understand, but I know, Lord, that you love me. What is making me suffer now? What is so hard for me now? Lord, that I understood it perhaps it will be a little more bearable. Lord, it's also your will and I accept it because you have allowed my brother's hand to reach my face. A conversion of humility. A conversion to accept the mystery, not the absurd. But what I cannot understand, which does not make it absurd, I do not understand how a computer works and computers work because they are people, people behind it, people smarter enough to make it work, who know how they work and have created them. Second point of humility, not only to accept not understanding, which is already very important, but accept those occasions in which I consider that I am being underestimated. Accept it by imitating the humble one. He who was the Almighty, God made him be born in a sheep cave to give us a great lesson. How the love of God is great. You who have to imitate the Almighty made flesh in Bethlehem. Him who you have to imitate. You have to try to resemble him by accepting those things that seem to you to have made you a little less or a little not less. Do not give it so much importance. Offer it to the Lord. You too do this act of conversion. Nothing happens. Maybe I should have been taken into account more. Maybe they had to applaud me more. I think above all of the poor housewives who do so much to make the home beautiful these days, to make the dinner extraordinary, to make the food as good as they can according to their possibilities. Then maybe they come home and gobble it all up and do not even say, Mom, it was real. The roast turned out real good. Accept that too. The second point of humility, that of not to be treated as you deserve or as you think you deserve because that is what God did for you. Convert. 
Convert to humility. Convert to accept God's will. Convert, not understand. Do not pretend to be God. You and I are not gods. Do not pretend to be above God. Decide for yourself what is good and what is bad. And do not pretend for God to give you explanations. Because he knows what he does. And many times, even if you do not understand them, many times you end up understanding it. And you will thank him for it. Amen.